right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, we're going to talk to James Basil now. He's editor-in-chief of AskMen.com. Uh, they've put together a fascinating, somewhat controversial, uh, and somewhat fun, no, you know what, a lot of fun list, uh, called the Top 49 Most Influential Men. Fascinating. Uh, James, welcome to the Young Turks. Hey, how are you guys? Uh, excellent. Now, uh, I have many questions about this list, but the first is, why 49? 49, because we do another list that's called the Most Desirable Women, and we name 99 of them. And so when we were coming up with this feature, we said, oh, let's have fun and make it rhyme with each other, And because uh, we're editors and we love consistency. So All right. 49, 99. That's a nice match. Everybody's having fun. All right. Everyone's having fun. Now, the guy who didn't come in number one is Barack Obama, which seems strange, doesn't it, since he's the president? Uh, isn't he enormously influential? Uh, well, I mean, that's an interesting question. Well, let me start by saying that a couple of years ago, he did come in number one. Not like last year, but the previous year's edition, the 2008 year's edition list, he came in at number one. So, you know, it seems intuitive that the president of the country, kind of, you know, the, the, the highest serving position in the country would have the most influence. But if you think about the way, you know, men kind of engage in media or... Uh, watch sports or read magazines or whatever else, the, the way that guys source their influence, everyday guys source their influence in, in an everyday way. You know, the president isn't really the most immediate person that, that, that we're face-to-face -face with. He's not really having an immediate impact on us that a lot of the other guys on the list and higher than him on, on the list are. What, what number did Obama come in? Uh, he came in at number 21. Damn, that's got to hurt. That stings. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, it's the uh, top 49 guys in the world. You want everyone wants to be number one, but it's good to be on the list. But you know what? There's definitely some statement there in his drop from number one two years ago to middle of the pack today. All right. Uh, so who came in number one? John Stewart came in at number one this year. All right. So why is that? Why John Stewart above all other men as most influential? Well, I think that on the one hand, Politics is very fun of mind for people these days, and not just in the terms of, you know, uh, elections or the, the, the way that, you know, politics are being played out, but, you know, rather government and the way that the country is managed and administered is very much fun of mind for people these days. And I think a lot of guys, certainly a lot of guys in Ask Men, get their sense of the lay of the land and their, their understanding of the political landscape from the John Stewart show, from the Daily Show. Um, it used to be dismissed as a I, you know, in some circles, I guess it's still is dismissed as just a funny show of comedy, satirical show, and it is all those things. But it's also the primary source of news information for a lot of guys. Yeah. So what, did Rick Sanchez make the list or no? No, he didn't make the list. Ah, okay. Rick's uh, in a lot of trouble in a lot of different ways. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's hidden away somewhere. All right. Uh, so now I'm looking at the list. I'm going to give uh, folks a little bit of a rundown here. Bill Gates is number two, Mark Zuckerberg is number three, Steve Jobs is four, Kanye West is number five, and Drew Brees is six, and James Franco is seven. So now, before I get to some of the others, so I get Steve Jobs. I might have made him number one given iPhone, et cetera, uh, and all the things that Apple does. But why Drew Brees? How, how is he influential? Well, I mean, I think that he's had an impact on a lot of our readers. On the one hand, just through admiring the guy, just as a, in terms of pure athletics and pure sportsmanship, we, we always see a few athletes uh, on the list, and some of them usually lodge pretty high. And for, you know, whether – it's tough to say how fair a connection this is, but people have come to kind of see him as the embodiment of New Orleans because he won the Super Bowl when, you know, in that city. So, you know, there's, there's something, there's a weird emotional thing at play there, I think, where people somehow, uh, all, all the kind of emotions and all the things that they associate with, with the Stephen New Orleans somehow gets wrapped up in, in, in him as a, as a public figure. Yeah, you know. I, I think that, sorry, go ahead. And, and you know, he was kind of uh, dismissed a little bit from San Diego. I mean, he had a great career, and, uh, and then they had a young uh, quarterback, Philip Rivers, who wound up being really great uh, in San Diego. Uh, and then a lot of teams passed up on Drew Brees. So there's something that a lot of people can relate to about Brees. And then he came back and, of course, was fantastic, which, by yeah, the way. Yeah, definitely. Guys, you know, guys are inspired by that, that, that inspires admiration in them. I, it's, it's very much a thing that guys can relate to. By the way, I predicted that. But uh, anyway, moving forward. So, uh, so how do you make the list? How, how, how do you get to decide who comes in six and who comes in seven? 
Okay, so the first step is we assemble a list of candidates, and that's, you know, between 150, 170 odd guys. We choose these guys based on what happened over the past year, like who were the players in their fields, who were, who were the faces of their fields, and also on the reader feedback that we get over the course of the year. So feedback in the forms of emails or comments or likes or whatever else, um, and also just the way that readers are navigating through the site, through the, the profiles of, of men on the, on the site on Ask Men. So having built that list of nominees, we invite readers to vote on them. Uh, they're voting in response to the question, who's had the most influence on you over the past year? And then influence might be a really you know, profound influence, like they, they changed your idea about something, they changed your perspective on the world, or maybe something more uh, superficial, I guess, in the sense of, you know, they, here's a guy who inspired you on how to dress or how to, you know, work out, uh, how to build a diet to complement your workout, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And Leaders vote. We uh, take those results. We vote as a staff and ask men. We compile those results and cut it off at 49. Okay. And, and do you, can I ask uh, the secret formula? What percentage is your votes? What percentage uh, is the uh, reader vote? It's half half. Oh, okay. Uh, so number nine is uh, Jose, what is it, Mourinho? Mourinho, yeah. Mourinho. What? And, you know, this, I think, is a reflection of our audience, of the kind of composition of our audience. Most of our audience is in the U.S. Uh, the vast majority of it is in the United States. But we do have sites in Australia, in the U.K., and in Canada. Um, so we see, you'll see in this list and all the other kind of big features we've produced, you'll see reflections of that, those international contributions or that international perspective. And this is one of them. So this guy is a coach. He's a very well-known soccer coach, uh, Portuguese-born, uh, uh, who oh, now coaches on. in the Premier League, and he won all three championships last year. And he's enormous outside of America. No, but as with most things, kind of soccer and football-oriented, uh, he, he's pretty under the radar. Now, yeah. James, you lost me in soccer. It's, come on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, outrageous. That, that, outrageous. That's the usual routine. Okay. All right. Uh, and it's things famous outside of America doesn't count. Um, yeah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, I know he's huge. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting to have these different characters, of course. Uh, we showed a picture of Graydon Carter there. He came in number 10. He's the editor of Vanity Fair. Very, very influential. That makes a lot of sense. And I think guys like Jon Stewart, who influence a lot of people uh, through their media and Graydon Carter, uh, it, you know, that makes sense to me. In fact, I, I don't know if uh, I didn't – is is Roger Ailes on the list? Because i got to be honest with you. Uh, whether we like it or not, he's he should be top ten. Yeah, he wasn't on the list. And you know what, forty nine is. You go through the list, and it's uh, you know it's a fun experience of doing it. And you kind of you relive the year almost going through all these guys. But there's also uh, when there's so many other potential candidates out there. It's uh, it's a really tough building on that nominee yeah. list every now, year. Now, now I hear you. Like like the uh, host of the largest online news show isn't on here either. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's shocking. Uh, anyway, uh, one last thing. You do find out interesting characters. I wanted to ask about uh, Elon Musk, who's at number eight. A lot of people might not know who he is either, but he's a fascinating character. Tell us uh, a little bit about him, James. Well, I think that most people associate him with, with Tesla cars, um, which is you know a, a car company that he, he founded that builds electric cars and is now kind of He's bringing this over into the mainstream by collaborating with Toyota on, on their, their next RAV4, I think, that, that he's building, a, working with them to make it a, an electric car. But he's also, you know, he was involved in PayPal. He's involved in space exploration. He's a really young guy, clearly a brilliant guy, um, who's into very manly things. He's into driving fast cars and going into outer space. And in that way, he's really living the dream for, for a lot of men who come to the site. And he's also having a huge impact in space travel and in, you know, electric car engineering. You know, two really interesting fields that are front of mind for a lot of guys right now. Right. He was one of the co-founders of PayPal, right? Yeah, that too. I yeah, mean, that... this guy, he's a brilliant guy. He's an amazing dude. Uh, and no man can help but admire him. You know, it's fascinating because yesterday we had a discussion about Peter Thiel, who was also made a tremendous amount of money from PayPal. And yeah. he's grotesquely selfish. And and is a lunatic. He doesn't think women should have the right to vote, uh, and that that uh, partly ruined the country. Uh, and that the Roaring Twenties, right before the Depression, was fantastic. That was the height of America. 
Yeah, wow, before the years. depression, right. But it's nice to see that one of the co-founders of PayPal is actually doing good in the world. It's yeah, good. no, he's definitely doing good stuff. I mean, I can't speak for his personality. I've never met the guy. I don't think most of the motorists or readers have either. And, and it's interesting, you know, what, what you just described, like, to, you know, to yield this influence, to, to get to this position where we're all aware of you and we're all looking at you, there's got to be pretty tough personalities at play, right? But, but happily, that's something that we had to really deal with in, in the nomination process. Yeah, thank God at least Musk is doing electric cars and we're getting something out of PayPal. All right, <laughs> James Basil is editor-in-chief of AskMan.com. Interesting list, as always, every year it is. Thanks so much for joining us, James. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It's nice to talk with you. All right. You too. Young Tony.